everyone. This is Acid Roots. I'm going to review Notorious by Notorious B.I.G. This is his the soundtrack to the movie about his life. Uh, Eminem has done one of these with 8 Mile, and 50 Cent did one of these with Get Rich or Die Tryin'. But it made sense for there to be a Biggie movie because he had a lot to say, and he was a pretty stellar musician, and he's always going to be seen as a goat in terms of, like, talking about rap music. And it's kind of... So this album, I'm glad that this came out. I'm definitely glad for the fact that this was the half... This is a thing that happened just because I look after it, and... For one thing, it's a good place to get a collection of some Biggie songs that are otherwise hard to get, but it also kind of showcases the fact of promoting the movie as well, because they didn't have to do this. I mean, really, a couple years before this album came out, there was a Notorious B.I.G. Greatest Hits album that basically has a lot of the songs on that album on this album, too, so it's kind of... It's kind of questionable which one would be better to get the greatest hits or to get the ones affiliated with the movie. But either way, I would probably just pick up them both. I mean, honestly, they're both good packages and both uh, releases have unreleased Biggie songs, even though some of them are not that great, at least on this album. But I do kind of feel like the story of Biggie is quite captivating, despite the fact that he was really only in the spotlight for about three and a half years, just between 1993 and... Uh, early 1997 but i do feel like there are some definite moments on here that showcase biggie's captivation i definitely think that's a good thing i'm glad that we got records like party and bullshit and the one more chance remix just because one more chance remix was not on any album i mean biggie remixed that song from his one more chance off ready to die but when that single hit, like, I think it hit, it hit number one or number two. I'm almost thinking that One More Chance Remix hit number one, but it was never released to an album. Biggie never put it on Conspiracy with Junior Mafia. That would, probably would have made that album sell a bunch. And he also didn't put it on Life After Death, and he didn't have any projects in between. So it's just kind of a secret song, but now there's a home project for it, and that's really good. And Party and Bullshit was kind of like his breakout single before Juicy, before Big Papa. And before One More Chance from Ready to Die, there was Party and Bullshit, which is pretty cool. There's just a number of stuff. So I'm just going to start getting into some of this. I'm going to have to kind of say, like, um, I'm just going to go ahead and list the songs I recommend to you out of 17. And there would be about uh, nine of them. So nine out of 17. So I'll go ahead and list them. So Letter to B.I.G. by Jadakiss, Hypnotize, Juicy. Party and Bullshit, One More Chance slash Stay With Me Remix, Kick In The Door, What's Beef, The World Is Filled, and Notorious Thugs. Now, to talk about some of the highlights off this project, the thing about it is, is I definitely feel like Party and Bullshit and One More Chance Remix are the definite hits to go for just because they're not on any of Biggie's studio albums apart from this. I mean, I think the only place you'd find some of these would be on the Greatest Hits album, but this is kind of like a mini, it's not quite a Greatest Hits, but it's just a compilation of, I don't know who was in charge of figuring out what songs need to be on this record. It's just kind of like a st stylistic compilation saying, hey, these are some good Biggie moments and they fit like a movie biography about his life. But it's not, this album is not a greatest hit. So I wouldn't walk into it thinking that that's the case. If you're like, well, where's Mo, Mo Money, Mo Problems? And where's like Get Money? And where's Play His Anthem? And where's like uh, Flava In Your Ear and some of those type ones, I'd have to say this is not a greatest hits record, but it does have some charming things. So besides those two songs, Party and Bullshit and One More Chance, there's some hits from Life After Death. I kind of, like I know Life After Death album pretty well. I feel like Kick In The Door probably should have been replaced with like Nasty Girl or something like that. I think that would have been the better choice. And What's Beef is a good one. This is Biggie disresponding to all his haters. And The World is Filled was a nice choice from, um, The World is Filled was a nice choice from Life After Death. But yeah, Mo Money, Mo Problems should have been on there. I think Another with Lil' Kim would have been a nice one. It really minimizes kind of Biggie and Lil' Kim's relationship. You see more of Faith Evans than you do of uh, Lil' Kim, which is too bad because they did have some chemistry. And, uh, there's really no Junior Mafia records on here. Like I said, no Get Money, no Play His Anthem. And, I mean, they have all the hits, basically, from, well, they don't have Big Pop, but they, I mean, I guess they don't. They're kind of missing some hits from the Ready to Die. I mean, this is just, it's a select kind of tab, and I just feel like there's some moments on here, 
I've talked about the life after death ones. I feel like Notorious Thugs, Notorious Thugs will always be one of Biggie's best songs just because of how well he annihilated the song and gave Bone Thugs a run for their money with their own style. So that's definitely a nice one that needed to be on here. And uh, Letter to B.I.G. by Jadakiss. I kind of like this one because it's kind of seen as like a record for fallen ho homies. <clears throat> I kind of like Letter to B.I.G. because it's kind of seen as a record for fallen homies. I mean, Tupac was pretty good about doing that stuff with, like, Life Goes On and I Ain't Mad at You and that type of stuff. But it's interesting that Jadakiss just, paint, just plain penned a letter, just plain penned a letter to B.I.G. and told him what's been happening across this past several years. It's pretty dope. I, I mean, it's not any sort of party song, but it's just a nice introspective kind of musing and smoking a pipe type thing that you might like. Hypnotize is on here. I mean, I like Hypnotize. It's the lead single off of Life After Death, but it's not as good as the rest of the album. I feel like it was just an appetizer. Like, I still like Mo Money, Mo Problems more than Hypnotize. I like I Love the Dough. I like Another. I like Fuck You Tonight with R. Kelly. I like, uh, you know, Going Back to Cali. I just feel like Hypnotize was a huge song, but it's not a definitive big, Biggie single. I'm still going to give it credit and say that it's a highlight, but there are better Biggie songs, even on this album, I would have to say. Like, The World is Filled is a better song than Hypnotize, in my opinion, and so is What's Beef and, and definitely Notorious Thugs. Yeah, I don't remember if I talked about Party and Bullshit. I'm going to talk about that one also, just because that was like a, a nice party song before the G-Funk type sound started getting started. Or production stopped having boom bap. I mean, this is kind of like a transactional stage party and bullshit. I would have to say that it's kind of right in between like the the doggy style and chronic era where there were more where, where there were better instrumentals and then like the boom bap stuff that was popular in the late 80s and early 90s. The you know the KRS One, Biz Marquee type stuff. But I mean, considering that Biggie is from the East Coast. Uh, it seems it makes its natural sense. It makes natural sense that he was a part of that. But I'm just glad that he was not in that style for very long. As as much as I like party and bullshit, I feel like Biggie's kind of cadence on the song is a little bit kind of worried, and it just sounds more kind of like insecure. I mean, if you compare party and bullshit to Big Papa, and if you compare party and bullshit to Big Papa. And one more chance remix. I mean, Biggie sounds so refined. He sounds so laid back and just effortless with what he does. But he sounds kind of like, kind of insecure and kind of paranoid on party and bullshit. Where he's just kind of in more of like a high octave like voice control. And he just sounds a lot more alarmed and that type of stuff. But it is a good song. But it's just more, I remember Puff Daddy saying, I remember reading an article like in Double XL or something like that, that they said that Biggie recorded Ready to Die in two segments, the stuff he did in 1993 and the stuff he did in 1994. And the stuff that Biggie did in 1993, like some of the, I can't remember the records, but there are some records off of Ready to Die that are very similar to his tonal pitch and party and bullshit. And that's how I know that Biggie did it in '93, because he had he just was he sounded a lot less comfortable and a lot more kind of paranoid and worried. But it's still a good song. I mean, he has lyrics for days. That's definitely kind of the thing. But yeah, so to talk about some of the records I didn't like, I'm kind of disappointed in all the demo songs. I didn't figure I would like them, but they just are really kind of stark, kind of boom bap and kind of dull and just ingratiating productions. I probably would never listen to more than the time. The, today when I listen to it and um, like Brooklyn Go Hard by Jay-Z. It's, it's cool that Jay-Z did a song on this album, but it really did a crap job just because uh, it try it tries to aim for like what Lil Wayne was doing with the Millie where it goes a Millie, a Millie, a Millie, Millie. You know, it has a beat like that where the chick in the song is just saying Brooklyn, we go hard over and over. But it just Jay Z did a pretty terrible job of making that similar to what Lil Wayne did. I, I, I mean, I know a chant for a beat is kind of something that can work at times. I don't know. It just did not hit nearly. It didn't even hit a, like a tenth as hard as Lil Wayne's and Millie did. For some reason, Lil Wayne just had a better kind of bass in the song and extra stuff added besides just the a Millie chant that made it more interesting. But Brooklyn Go Hard just could not pull it off. And, you know, songs like Warning were just more of kind of like boom bap style songs where I do feel like Ready to Die kind of was boom bap, but it's just kind of because Biggie and Jay-Z and Nas were some of the ones that revolutionized East Coast sound to where they weren't just on these stark kind of like uh, beatbox type beats all the time. They just really were not in good 
taste, I would have to say, but there is a song from Born Again on here. It's been a long time since I've listened to Biggie's first posthumous album, Born Again, but I don't really like Notorious B.I.G. I feel like the chorus is kind of goofy with them just talking about being notorious. I, I really don't know if Biggie would have shown up on that beat. I'm glad that Lil' Kim and Puff Daddy were on there, but it, I couldn't get into that one. It was, that, that was what I thought was the theme to this movie, but it's just kind of a really awkward one. The Notorious theme was not that interesting or captivating either. I, I would have liked for the arrangement. I don't know. It just sounded so dramatic, and I would have liked for something that could have been a little bit more recreational. I mean, the thing about this movie is it kind of portrays Biggie kind of more life in the fast lane, like he's paranoid because he doesn't have much time to do anything. But I would have taken a, B, a, a, a Notorious theme like Biggie or... I would have taken a notorious theme like Big Papa or Juicy or like Hypnotize, something like that, something a little bit more recreational. It just felt like so scathing and kind of like a bad way. Yeah, so, and then I, I didn't really care for the One More Chance remix. I mean, it's cool that Biggie had his kid on there, but it just wasn't as catchy as the original one. And uh, so that's kind of the stuff. There's a lot of lackluster stuff on here. There's a lot of lackluster stuff on here. So me liking nine out of 17 i'm gonna go ahead and give this album like a 5.75 out of 10. i think a 5.75 is pretty good just because there was over half of it that was liked i would give it a six but it's just not quite high enough to really warrant that a 5.75 will be sufficient but the main reason why i would buy this album is basically for two reasons party and bullshit and then the one more chance remix those would be the two songs i would want and if, I mean, really, even Letter to B.I.G., if Jadakiss had kept that on this album, I would have said that that was song number three. But you can basically find Letter to B.I.G. on Jadakiss's 2009 album. So this is one more that he did on there, but he gave this single to this record, but it's not an exclusive. So that kind of, that kind of negates this project a little bit because it just doesn't have enough exclusive exclusives. It does have three demos, but they're really ass. They're just not good at all. And some of the new stuff that this album tries just really stumbles a lot. And it's just kind of, I mean, I found myself liking the songs Biggie made when he was alive, or at least the songs that he was trying to make, rather than the demos and the some of the posthumous stuff and, like, the odes to Biggie and that type of stuff. Like, it's just kind of, I don't know. It's just odd because that's most people's complaint about a posthumous album is the fact that it doesn't have the magic Midas touch that the artist who was who died would have for it but that's just kind of thing it's not like it's not bad it's just it doesn't have many exclusives and there's a lot of blunders on here that kind of solely biggies i don't want to say solely it like it it would be an insult to him but it just kind of tarnishes like the impact that it could have had just because there's just not enough quite in quality for what needs to happen so that's kind of the scenario there so 5.75 like i really feel like there are better records on uh, ready to die than juicy i would have went with big papa instead and maybe like machine gun funk or the song he did with method man there just were plenty of instances for that they, they didn't even pick the best records off of life after death there were so many more jubilant moments but to say one more thing about the complaints it just feels like there's a lot of stuff on this album that aims for more of like the dramatic kind of gangsta and thugged out mafioso biggie more so than the party and kind of have a good time recreational because he did do songs like nasty girl i love the dough with jay-z uh play his anthem some of those type ones I'm trying to think of a few other ones he could have they could have thrown a puff daddy song on here like victory or something or like mo money mo problems just any of those particular records where it could have been more kind of uh jubilant and it just wasn't i mean you get records like Kick in the Door, which is a good song, but it just the demos were not really recreational. The One More Chance remix was just kind of a more family moment. Warning was kind of like that. Juicy was a little bit starry-eyed, and Notorious B.I.G. was kind of the, and the song Notorious B.I.G. was awkward. So it's just kind of, I like Biggie on this, but I just feel like the song selection was very kind of tepid. I felt like the song selection was tepid, and that's just kind of the thing about it. So. The social score, I will give it like a 6 out of 10 because there are some bubblers on here. I feel like Hypnotize, Party and Bullshit, One More Chance Remix, The World is Filled, Notorious Thugs, 
uh, some of those really do have some exuberance to them, but it's just very fleeting. And it's just like, for the most part, the fact that the exclusive Biggie songs are really in minimal amounts, there's not a total real gasp to go and get this. You might as well, you just would be better off getting Biggie's actual albums, but I still respect the release. So six out of 10, it has some hits on here, but this is not the definitive go-to uh, like thing I would go to for Biggie. I just would have to say there are hits that are not on here and there's some odd choices and some bad choices that just kind of downplay it. But for what it is, it had a mild stylus, a mild stylish result that does have some gems in here if you look hard enough. So in terms of the future, there isn't really, I mean, Biggie, I guess, had an album with his old wife. Biggie, I guess, had an album with his old wife, Faith Evans, called, like, The King and I, but that's really been the last batch of, like, Biggie material in a long time. I mean, he is deceased, so it's just kind of, I want to get some more of these Biggie records kind of taken care of, so there you have it.